I'm John Hart, and my book is Redemption Road. A lot of people ask me, why do I write so dark? Well, the reason is this. Because humans are flawed creatures, um, you know, the things that make them great are not always bright and shiny. I mean, right. the things that make us great, things like family and trust and strength and selflessness and courage and um, faith in the future and all of these things, that's what I like to write about. But because they flicker dimly, it's important to surround them with darkness. And so if I take these basically flawed but good people, put them into really dark circumstances, then those qualities have a chance to shine more brightly and that right. leads to compelling fiction. Right. You could set your books anywhere, but you set them in North Carolina. So what's the danger in, in placing it in your hometown? You know, there are people that get upset because they think they're in the books. There are people right. who get upset because they think they should be in the books and they're not. <laughs> um, you know, in my first novel, The King of Lies, I had some very unpleasant women. I mean, yes. self-serving, money-grubbing, right. backstabbing, insincere women. Everybody in Salisbury thought they were based on real people. I kept being asked, you know, who are these horrible women? <laughs> and I had to say that they're purely fictional because right. people thought they knew who they were and it, it got ugly. And so. People were probably fighting, it's yeah. you. No, it's you. Yep, so that was not good. When you write about crime, how often are you pulling inspiration from real world events? Not as much as you'd think. For me, it always starts with character. I'm a big believer in writing character. I like to uh, steal a quote from Jocelyn Jackson who says that the best way to introduce your readers to the characters you've built is to put all of those characters in one room, lock the door, and set one of them on fire. And if you think about it, that's a genius because, you know, until that, that circumstance happens, you don't know who's going to try to beat down the door, who's right. going to panic, who's going to freeze, or who's going to put out the fire. What did growing up in a medical household do to your mind? How did that shape you as a person and as a writer? Well, it threw me off track for the first half of my life. Um, I mean, my father was uh, a surgeon, his brothers were surgeons, my grandfather was chief of surgery at Duke. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up assuming that I was supposed to follow in those footsteps. Hey, same here. Yeah, so I literally left the country for six months to try to find myself. I went to France, came back knowing that I didn't want to be a doctor and knowing how to speak French really well. Um, and so I shifted my major to French literature. Mm -hmm. I studied a lot of the existential writers, um, and I think you can see those influences in every book I've ever written. Maybe if I had not grown up in a medical family, I wouldn't have found my way to, right. to that particular area of study. Thank you so much for being here today. You are very welcome. It's been my pleasure. And thank you for joining us for A Word on Words. I'm Mary Laura Philpott. Keep reading. And the other thing we have in common is Davidson College, yeah. where we both went. I also started out pre-med, but I bailed much earlier than you did. Well, they say organic chemistry makes more religion majors than anything else. That's what it was. <laughs> Go Wildcats. Go Wildcats. <laughs>